Greetings from the land of OP. I am Rob the OP Gamer, and I am bringing you another episode of Build Spotlight. And I am standing in the neither. I uh, hope everybody's ready to see some uh, new build that I've got going on here. Today's going to be all about dynamos. Thermal expansion released not too long ago. We've been getting into it pretty heavily on the server here, so I wanted to get going with some of those dynamos. I'm actually going to be working on a build spotlight pretty soon for a different setup, but I need to get power for that setup, and I figured I might as well do a spotlight on dynamos and how to automate them. So let's get cracking on that. And of course, don't forget that uh, you can check out all of my OP Gaming live on my stream at twitch.tv slash robtheopgamer, as well as on my YouTube at robtheopgamer, and see when I post videos up by following me on Facebook and Twitter at robtheopgamer. So... Let's get go. Let's get cracking into it here. You can see that I'm in the neither, and I've got a pump going on here. I'm not going to be setting up everything in, on camera. In fact, I'm not going to be setting up much of anything on camera today. I actually went around and did a lot of camera off work or off camera work to get everything going because this is going to be kind of a large build. I'm going to be covering all four of the dynamos the thermal expansion adds. There's three dynamos for thermal expansion's power. They've broken away from using regular buildcraft power in the last time that they updated, so they're running on their own power source now called uh, Redstone Flux. And the Redstone Flux is generated by their four types of engines at the moment. I'm not sure if they plan more or not, but each type of engine adds a different kind of way to power things with, with fuel sources. There's the steam dynamo, there is the magmatic dynamo, there is the compression dynamo, and there is the reactant dynamo. And these each have to be powered in different ways, and I figured what better way than to show how to automate them all. So the magmatic dynamo generates hot fluids, requires hot fluids. The only hot fluid that I actually really know of is lava, so yeah, look at that. Neither pump. So i uh, got a little neither house going on here, and we're pumping lava. And this is a pretty simple setup. Uh, you've got your pump going on here, which is... Not that hard to make. Let's look up the pump really quick. The pump is a simple buildcraft machine. You take a tank, which is eight glass in a circle, and you put it over the top of a mining well, which is six iron on uh, three on either side, a redstone, an iron gear, which is four iron around a stone gear, which is four cobblestone around a wood gear, which is four sticks. And then you get your iron pickaxe, which is just two sticks and three iron across the top. Then I'll get you your pump. And we are pumping with redstone engines. Let's look those bad boys up really quick. The redstone engine is another buildcraft engine, buildcraft machine. You take a piston, which is just uh, an ironing in the middle, a redstone in the bottom, four cobblestone, two on either side, and three wood across the top. And your wood gear, which we already covered on either side, a piece of glass in the middle, and three planks, just any kind of wood plank along the top there. So that's going to get you a redstone engine. And I got four of them around the sides. This is an ender tank from uh, Ender Storage. And I've got it coated to black, red, black, because that's what I like to use for lava. And uh, the ender tank is just a really easy way to move liquids between dimensions. Or anywhere, really. They function just like an ender chest, but they share it liquid inventory instead of solid. And the ender tank is made pretty simply by getting four blaze rods around the corners. Two obsidian in the middle uh, left and middle right, a cauldron in the center, a uh, piece of wool in the top, and an ender pearl in the bottom. The cauldron is just seven iron, shaped like uh, upside down pants, really. <laughs> I'm going to wear a cauldron from now on in my pants. And then this is redneck cable from Mine Factory Reloaded, which is what I'm using to convey the redstone signal to the engines from, which is a simple letter, le lever. Redneck cable is pretty awesome stuff. It's pretty easy to make as well. You just need three redstone along the center. And three plastic sheets on top and bottom get you eight of them. These plastic sheets are just four raw plastic, which you get from smelting a rubber bar, or just regular rubber if you have industrial craft and, and they're set up to use crosswise with each other. Rubber bar is just smelted raw rubber. And the raw rubber is actually got from harvesting mine factory loaded rubber trees, which look different than normal ones from industrial craft. So it's a pretty simple pump setup. We've got a chunk loaded here, as you can see, which is from chicken chunks. So it's just a simple pump house. And while we're here, since we're in the neither, uh, we're going to get us a ghast. And I'll show you why in a few moments. Don't worry, we'll get there. Don't panic, whatever you do. We will get all the explanations going on. The safari nets here are going to catch us a ghast. 
and you can use the single net use one, which is also this is also for Mine Factory Reloaded. It's four string in the corners, a slime ball in the center, and a leather up at the top. It's a single use ball, so you can see that if I uh, if you use the single use ball and you capture something, and by the way, you can't be in cheat mode to capture stuff, so I'm actually going to switch off uh, creative here and just play regular survival for just a few moments here. So let's, uh, I pre-armored myself for this. The, single, the safari ball will catch any monster and hold it inside that ball. So if you go up to a monster and you right-click, boom. You see it change colors, it's sort of pinkish now, and it says I've got a zombie pigment. And it says he's got 20 health. And since this is a single-use ball, as soon as I right-click to place it back down, the ball goes away. You see it disappeared and the zombie has reappeared. But the reusable ball is a gas tier in the center surrounded by ender pearls. And if you capture something, you get it right in the ball, just like a zombie pigment. Or zombie net, net. I need to stop saying ball. It's not a safari ball. That's a Pokemon thing. Showing my nerdism from my childhood. Whoops. But anyway, it says that you've got him here, and if you right-click, it replaces him, and you still have your ball. So the single-use ones are probably a little bit better for that, but the uh, multi-use ones are a little more versatile, but the single-use one will do you just fine. We just need to go find a gas really quick, and I've heard him flying around here for a few moments. Where'd he go? See up in the top over here? He was down in the lava a little while ago. Let's go see if we can find him. There he is. So we just run up and right-click him. Maybe. Whoops. That was a nice little fail. There we go. Uh, there's also a... Let's see. Safari... Net launcher. Let's get, let's get another one of those. We'll demonstrate those really quick. And I think this will work in creative mode. But this is made pretty simply as well. It's just going to be two plastic sheets, two gunpowder, two redstone, or, or two glowstone on the sides, a redstone on the bottom, and two iron ingots. And this will actually launch your safari ball. I think there's a... There we go. So if you shift and right click, it'll change what mode it's in. So change to capture mode, change to release mode. So when you shoot the ball, it will do one of those things. So let's find a little... There's a hecate right over there. So we're in capture mode. Let's right click to shoot it. And you see it hit the hecate and bounce on the ground. So now I've got a Safari Net reusable with a Hecate inside. And then if you shift right click back into release mode, and right click again on the wall there, well that's a little latency. Whoa! That's my guest. <laughs> so it launches the um, leftmost one in your inventory, but that might be an easier way to capture your guest if you can aim a little easier, but as you can see I just totally pitched that into the lava. Because I am so oh no, I missed the lava. Lucky me. But you definitely want to be careful of the lava, obviously, because otherwise you will just waste your ball. So I'm just going to run up here. Oh, in creative mode again, so I can't right-click him. Where'd that other one go? I saw a different gas a second out. You're in the lava, too. Well, you know what? Let's fix this. We're cheating anyway. Let's get him upwards a little ways. Uh, capture mode. Fly him up a little bit. There we go. Since we're cheating anyway. So that's how to use the safari balls and the capture nets. So let's get going back up to the overworld here. Now that we got our gas and we got our lava pump going, we are done in the neither for the rest of this video. So I'm just going to follow this nice little staircase I pre-made myself. Because why not? <laughs> when you're cheating, you might as well cheat all the way. So, anybody that might have saw, seen my last build spotlight where I covered uses and setups and all that kind of good stuff for the automated ore berry farm, may remember that I had this base going on here. Wow, that's laggy. Let me take care of that really quick, guys. Alrighty, so I got the lag taken care of pretty much, I think. So let's go ahead and keep going with what we were doing. Uh, you guys may recognize the base from the last video when we got set up for the previous build spotlights for the automatic ore berry farm. I've expanded things a little bit here. We're going to take a look through what we've expanded uh, in a few moments here. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to start getting ready to set up for our 
dynamos here. So I've got a steam dynamo, which is what we're going to look at first. The steam dynamo, actually I need to do that cell, what am I doing? The steam dynamo is going to be its power source for the redstone flux. So if we plonk those down just so we can see them really quick, the steam dynamo is going to operate on solid fuel and water. So let's get some water really quick. I'm just going to take a bucket because I'm in creative mode. I cheat so you don't have to. <laughs> so we can see we got it filled up with water and it's going to take a solid fuel. So you can go coal, you can go charcoal. Uh, most solid fuels will work, I believe. So if we stick it in there, you can see it will instantly begin pumping in steam. And it will fill up about halfway, but it's burning it as fast as getting it after that. So coal, water burning is going to get its fuel. You can see the cell is starting to fill up here. We've got 17,000, we've got 21,000, and it's receiving its power in from the side here. And it will continue to power until its own internal buffer fills up, which means that this will fill all the way up, and then this will fill all the way up, and then it will stop running. Um, it will go into an idle mode, in which point it will be burning half the normal amount of fuel. So it will it'll burn coal half as slowly and use up water half as slowly. And it will, but it will still continue to consume just at a half rate in its idle mode, unless you turn it off. So there's three redstone signals. Disabled means it will ignore all redstone signal and self-manage itself, just like I had mentioned, once it fills up its internal buffer. Redstone control means if it's on low signal, it will only run if it's getting low signal. So if you flip the lever, it turns it off. Stops what it's doing, just pauses it where it's at. If it's in high, it will only run with the signal. So if you turn the lever off, then it will it will stop running. High will mean it will continue running. You can tell when it's on or off because it lights up and sh and, uh, and dims down. So you can give a nice little visual on when it's running. So that's pretty much the steam boiler in a nutshell. So uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to go take a look at uh, the next feature of the steam boiler. As you can see, if you hold shift for more information, it says steam may be pumped into it instead. Huh, let's go look into pumping steam. As you can see, I've expanded into the back room, made a little bit of a workshop area. So we should be all set up in here pretty well. A lot of stuff going on here, so I'm going to walk you guys through all this shit one piece at a time. So over here, um, I've got the steam boiler, and this is a railcraft setup. As you can see, it's a high-pressure steam boiler with a solid fuel firebox. This is a railcraft machine. Uh, I've covered steam boilers a little bit in the past, but let's just go ahead and take another look at them really quick here. So the solid fuel box and the high pressure boiler, there's also a liquid box and a low pressure boiler. The solid box is made by getting a furnace and a fire charge and seven bricks are on the top, which is just cooked clay, smelt it in a furnace. And the fire charge is just a coal or charcoal, a gunpowder and a blaze, rod, a blaze powder. You get three of those. So basically you need three recipes. And you place them in a three by three fashion like so and then you can build up to four high, which is how that one in the corner is built. But they don't have to be that big. They can be smaller as well. So if you are to look at it, it'll tell you right on there. Multi-block, variable size above firebox, dimensions one by one by one, two by two by two, two by three by two, three by two by three, three by three by three, three by four by three, produces 10 millibucks of steam per tick. So you could make something as simple as that, and you've got a working boiler, see? And it just depends on how you make it. The high pressure boiler is two steel plates, gets you one of the boiler tanks. These are just uh, four steel in a rolling machine, gets you four of them. So you basically get one plate per steel ingot. So keep that in mind when you're mathing out your boiler. The low pressure tank is the same deal, it's just iron plates in the rolling machine. It's the same sort of numbers, it's just iron instead of steel. And, of course, steel you cook in a... There's two ways to get steel. You can make a blast furnace, or you can use thermal expansion. So make sure to check your steel recipes in NAI. Let's see if we can get them up here. Yep, so you can take an induction smelter, and you can put charcoal, coal powder, or just straight coal, I believe one of the two, and then you can just smelt them with iron in the induction smelter, and that'll get you some steel. That's a really quick way to get steel through thermal expansion method. Or you can put them in a blast furnace, cook them up. And then the liquid fire blocks, instead of taking solid fuels, it'll take liquid, so biofuel, regular fuel, ethanol, 
that kind of stuff. And you're going to take, uh, it's a lot more expensive, a lot more difficult to make. You need four steel plates, which we just covered, a furnace, which of course is just your eight cobblestone, one of your fire charges, a bucket, and two iron bars, which is six iron, gets you 16 of them. And uh, so that's, those are your various boilers. And the only difference between high pressure and low pressure is that low pressure, I think, puts out a little less steam. It used to be a matter of efficiency. Now I think it's a matter of steam. And the way that it works out, I've been testing this out, is that when you're doing solid fuel, I've got golden power sources coming in here because I've got a tree farm outside, which is actually feeding us two purposes. I'm using the saplings for ethanol, which I'll cover in a little while, and I'm using the force logs for the golden power sources, which are a lot, they function a lot like charcoal and coal, but they're a little bit better. So I've got your tree carts, and I've covered these in previous episodes as well. But basically the cart is a really expensive cart that we're using. You don't have to use a cart tree farm. You can use any sort of farm that you want to. You can even do it manually if you'd like. You can use a golem chopping trees. You can use a buildcraft farm doing logs. However you want to go about it is perfectly fine. Uh, I, I just like the tree carts because you can set up the Galgadori woodcutter. Let's take a look at that really quick here. So you've got your Galgadorian woodcutter here, and it's made out, there's two recipes for it, starting with a woodcutting core or upgrading your hardened cutter. The hardened cutter can upgrade from a diamond, a basic cutter, and the basic cutter is just a uh, diamond saw blade. So your woodcutting core is just going to be eight of any kind of sapling surrounding an advanced PCB. The advanced PCB is made out of two regular PCBs, three iron ingots, and four redstone. The regular PCB is just a gold, four iron, and four redstone. So that's how you're going to get those guys. And this is out of the uh, Steve's Carts mod. And your basic woodcutting core is going to involve an iron ingot and that basic core, and uh, five saw blades, which is one diamond and two iron. Okay? So if you start with that, this will take durability damage over time, as will the hardened one. As you can see, it says durability 100%. Durability 100%. The hard one wears its durability out a lot slower, and you can repair them. I'm not exactly sure how. I've never actually done it. So if you start with a diamond one, you can just keep upgrading your way up to the Galgadorian because Galgadorian is really expensive. The hardened one is made out of shiny metal, reinforced metal, which is going to be your stabilized metal, which is made out of this crazy mesh setup. This is some crazy... <laughs> this is so nuts, the way this stuff is made. So you get your... Uh, Refined hardener, smelted out of a raw hardener, which is four obsidian and a diamond in the center. Gets you two of them. And then you've got your hardened mesh, which is four more of those guys, and five of those iron bars. That gets you five of them. So basically one of those recipes is one is, uh, all your saw blades you'll need for your hardened woodcutter. That'll get you what you need to go there. But I like to go for the Galgadorian one because, as you can see, the Galgadorian one is unbreakable. So it'll just go forever. Forever and ever and ever. No, have, not have no worry about ever touching it again, which, as everybody knows, that's what I like. In a game in which you have to click everything all the time, I like to not have to click things as little as possible. So I go with the unbreakable stuff, because the Galgadorian metal is uh, five saw blades and one of those Galgadorian metals. Or you can upgrade the hardened wood cutter with just straight metal instead of the saw blades. But uh, those guys are going to be, you get uh, a lump of Galgador smelts into one. And the Lump of Galgador, you get two of them out of, look at all this crap, you get a diamond block, which is nine diamonds, and then you get uh, two of those stabilized metals we just covered, three glowstone, and three eyes of Galgador, which is made out of four magma cream, two redstone, I'm sorry, two gas tears, two fermented spider eyes, and an eye of ender. The fermented spider eyes is a mushroom, and a sugar, and a spider eye. And the eye of ender is, of course, an ender pearl and a blaze powder. So it's all kinds of crazy mob drops. You gotta fight gas, you gotta fight magma cubes, you gotta fight spiders, you gotta fight endermen, mm -hmm. gotta fight blazes. <laughs> you have to fight all the things forever, and eventually you will get yourself the Algodorian woodcutter. But that's how I like to roll. That's what I like to roll with. So I usually don't get to doing this tree farm until until quite a ways in, but it's once you know where to go and get them, it's not that hard to do. These cargo managers are pretty simple as well. Let's take a look at those really quick. Cargo manager is going to be uh, four huge iron panes, two large iron panes, and a large dynamic pane. These panes are just nine 
or four regular panes. And uh, the dynamic one is four dynamic ones. Large dynamic one is four regular ones in a redstone, which is a regular iron pane in a redstone. These iron panes are made out of one iron ingot surrounded by eight chest panes. Get you eight of these guys. And these chest panes are made out of two logs and uh, seven planks made in an eye shape. Get you 32 of those. So that's going to be your cargo manager, which is when the cart comes along, he dumps stuff off in those. And then you get your distributor, which is below it. And this guy is just a matter of uh, four stone and four of those simple PCBs and a redstone in the center. We covered those PCBs a few moments ago, so no worries about that. And the way that it works out is that the cart dumps off inside of the cargo manager. you got to make sure you got the right side, so you got the blue side here. He's going to come around and hit the blue side every time. So you tell him to dump off his inventory into the manager. You tell him to take anything he might need for fuel and saplings, and then I always disable that last one, because he doesn't really need that one working all the time. Unless you've got something else like fertilizer that you're working on. So, you can see he's dumping off right now, and he picks up anything he might need and heads on his way. I don't know why he rolled off backwards there, that was kind of weird. So, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> he's moonwalking like Michael Jackson. That is the Michael Jackson cart, right up in there. And I'm not going to do the Michael Jackson voice because my voice's impersonations are terrible. Let's get down here and take a look underground. And as you can see, I've got an AE system set up here. You saw it in the base. This isn't a uh, setup about AE necessarily, but I'm just managing the farm with AE. This is an import bus. The external distributor pulls things out. You tell it what side to work with. So you can see the lower side is purple here. This side is yellow, just like the manager. Each side is a different setup here. I just totally ruined his tree. Sorry, guy. My bad. He'll fix it when he comes back around. And as if I, when he dumps stuff in, the AE system just pulls it out. It's that simple. So that's the setup with all these guys. And then this is the liquid manager. It's filled up with lava. It requires a lot of tanks. So, four advanced tanks and four iron get you one of these guys. One advanced tank is eight huge tank panes and a tank valve. Uh, it's basically the exact same way to make it as the wooden panes were and the iron panes. So, two glass and six panes, which is just six glass for 16 of them. Get you 32 of those guys. Works the exact same way as the chest panes, it's just glass instead. And the tank valve is an iron bar surrounded by iron. So it's just a lot of glass, basically. And I've disabled these three sides because he doesn't really need to get one of those. Because these guys have a thermal tank inside, and he's running off of lava. I like to put lava engines and solar engines in my carts because I find that when they get stuck under trees... People have a lot of problems with Steve's carts because if, they got, if they're running on solar power, that's fine. But when they get underneath the tree, you see the solar engine folds up and goes away. And then when the leaves go get chopped down, they come back out. So he can't run under trees, and he can't run at nighttime. So you need a second way to power him if he runs out of sunlight. So I've got him set to high priority on the solar engine and uh, medium on the thermal. And I've got the coal engine disabled, but I just have it in there for an option in case I want to do something with it. You can see he's filled up on force logs for his coal engine. And here's the mods I used. I used a reinforced hull, thermal engine, solar engine, coal engine, the Galgadorian woodcutter that I just showed you. Uh, an internal tank so you can hold his lava, a side chest pane, two internal storages, which is these guys right here, and then the exotic tree cart module so that he can chop trees that aren't part of the Steve's cart or vanilla mod. Because these forest trees are part of Darkcraft, it's a completely different mod. So yeah, no worries there. Just make sure you can use whatever track you want to, just make sure that you have the advanced detector rail in front so that he knows to stop at these managers, so that he can get himself fueled up and going the way he needs to. Look those up really quick. Just six iron, two pressure plates, and a redstone. Get you two of them. One pressure plate, just two stone. No big deal. So that's your tree farm. Manage with the AE system. I've got ender tanks for the lava pump underneath. That's how they're getting fueled. 
so yeah there's that tree farm is good and everything's coming inside here we've got just a basic AE system going on which you probably saw in the corner a few moments ago in the workshop this is for auto crafting and here's your terminals and all that kind of stuff shows you what you've got inside the, the system so we'll cover that in a minute because uh, that's how that's working out what's happening is I've told there's an interface here an ME interface over top you have to have your controller here's my controller which manages the AE network the controller is set up so that the interface here knows that it can craft one golden power source with one force log and it knows to put it downwards and so I've got a liquid fueled upgrade here coming in with ethanol to power it and this is all better furnace this is a better furnaces furnace this is an extreme furnace runs at 50 times normal speed and you don't need these two in here at all really well the fuel upgrade is nice fuel efficiency because it takes less ethanol but you don't need it necessarily this is just in there for kicks that's not necessary either for this so he knows that if he dumps one golden or if he dumps one force log in he gets one golden power source and this is just an import bus pulling everything out as it gets cooked so the network knows AE system knows if it dumps in golden logs force logs it gets golden power sources and that's how that works out so that's good there the extreme furnace better furnaces mod let's look at that really quick these just added variety of extra furnaces an iron furnace which is just a regular furnace surrounded by iron cooks at 1.5 times as fast so you get a 50 percent boost golden one is an iron one surrounded by gold this is two times normal speed Diamond one is four diamonds and four glass around the gold one, and this one cooks at uh, five times normal speed. The hell furnace is two diamond blocks, three magma cubes, two neither bricks, and a TNT, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> TNT is just five gunpowder and four sand. That'll get you the hell furnace. This is, I believe, 25 times normal speed. And then the extreme furnace is going to take a neither star, two eyes of ender. And two end stone and neither bricks. So you're gonna to need to have gone to the end stone and found that, or you can get your and your neither star. So you'll have to have killed the wither. The hell furnace I've, I will do you just fine, to be completely honest with you, because this thing doesn't consume anywhere near as fast as this thing's. Look, it's it's sitting dark a lot of the time, so it'll cook and then it just sits dark for a long time. So if you don't have a wither star, you can use that just fine. You can also use any real form that you want to of cooking those things. I just like the better furnaces. One of my favorite mods. You can use any sort of furnace cooking as long as you've got like if you use vanilla furnaces if you want to just cobblestone ones you'll just need a wall of them you'll need like i think previous tests i did i needed something like uh 18 iron furnaces so you'd probably need something like 24 regular ones cooking up uh, those force logs at all times to keep up with it so that's why i just have the one there so no big deal there and this is just an, a deep storage setup so back behind here i've got storage buses that tells this what to store so all the force logs are coming into this one all these saplings are coming into this one and these deep storage units are also from mine factory reloaded the reason I use them is because they're like barrels but they can store two million of an item so yeah <laughs> deep storage units is going to be three ender pearls two eyes of ender one factory machine and some of that plastic sheets we talked about before gets you four of them the factory machine block is three stone and three of those plastic sheets get you three of them so they're not that bad, really. You just need to have some ender, ender pearls going on. And that will get you set up and rolling with those. So yeah, good things there. So basically what's going to happen is over here, underneath of this thing, I have a aqueous accumulator keeping this thing supplied with water because you have to have your boiler supplied with water and steam at all times. Or water and fuel, basically, is how you get the steam. So you got to keep water in it at all times. Aqueous Accumulator is a thermal expansion machine, since we've been doing a lot of thermal expansion. The Aqueous Accumulator, there it is, is going to be just a bucket, a machine frame, two of any kind of glass, your pneumatic servo, and two tin ingots. The machine frame is the basic base machine block for thermal expansion machines. You're going to need either four steel or four iron and a gold in the middle. And four of any kind of glass will get you one of those. And your servo is pretty simple as well. Whoop. 
Servo is just going to be two iron, a redstone, and two of any kind of glass. And that's how you're going to get yourself a accumulator, and you surround it with water. As you can see, I've just got just source blocks sitting around the thing, water source, and it will just generate water forever. So he's exp and, and he's outputting to the top. You can see the orange is the output sides. It's not touching anything except the top, basically, so it's receiving water from that. And then I've got this thing. It's an export bus. It exports things out of the AE network, so it knows it's storing logs, and it knows how to craft the golden power sources out of logs. So this tells it, hey, keep this thing filled up with, with golden power sources as much as you can, and this is set to move single items slash craft. So if there's no golden power source in the network, but it knows how to make them, it will make them and feed it. So that's how we're keeping this thing filled up. And then all we have to do is get ourselves some steam engines. So let's take some redstone cell here. And we are going to just hook this up to that guy. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. So, um, the redstone conduit is going to be made out of fluid transposing destabilized redstone into a redstone conduit empty. The redstone conduit is going to be two electrum and a hardened glass. The electrum is going to be one silver ingot and one gold ingot. Get you two of them and an induction smelter. Or I guess you can use sandum and electrum blend. Or you can use gold dust and silver dust of any kind, or just the bars themselves. The induction smelter is a thermal expansion machine as well. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. One of those machine blocks that we talked about, a bucket, two copper, redstone transmission coil, which is a golden center, and two redstone, and then your machine block, and two iron bar ingots, which are pretty easy to get as well. You'll find ferrous ore out in the world and all you got to do is cook an einvar blend to get the ingot which is made out of combining two iron dust with a with the pulverized ferrous metal the ferrous ore is an ore just a world generation ore so you can see it up here so you just get one of those and an iron ore and you take it into a pulverizer machine which is basically like a macerator from industrial craft but it's a thermal expansion version and you pulverize that and you get the dust you can combine them and cook it not that hard to do really the pulverizer is that machine block again, that reception coil, which is the gold one, two copper, two flint, and a piston. All stuff that's easy that we've covered already. And that's how you pulverize those. So once you get yourself those two electrum in that, th in that uh, induction smelter, the hardened glass is also cooked in the induction smelter. Eight obsidian dust and one lead. The obsidian dust, you get four of them pulverizing out of one obsidian. So you just get two obsidian and one lead, get you two of those glass. And in order to get the destabilized redstone, you got to have two other machines, which I've also got out here set up. You need the magma crucible and the fluid transposer. The magma crucible is going to be two neither bricks, one of those machine blocks, two copper ingots, that redstone transmission coil again, and a redstone energy cell, which is just four lead, four of any kind of glass, and a redstone block, which is just nine redstone. So he's not hard to make either. And then the... Fluid transposer is just going to be a bucket, two of any kind of glass, and two copper in that coil and that machine block again. It seems really complicated, guys, I know. It just seems awful, but it's not that bad, really. I swear to God. <laughs> Once you actually get working on it, you just find those basic materials I just pointed out. And uh, looking at all this setup as I'm covering it just really quick, it just looks like a giant kick in the dick. I promise you, once you get going, it's not going to be that bad. So you set the magma crucible on top of, or to the side of, the fluid transposer. I just have them on top right here. You go into configuration, you tell it to output. Orange is output. You can see the tank is highlighted orange. When you drop a redstone in here, actually let's look at that within the, uh, within the recipe here. When you drop one redstone in here, what's this? Destabilize drop. Oh, magic bees. So I guess you can get those if you have a lot of bees going on too. You drop one redstone in here. And it cooks it up for 8,000 RF, and it makes 100 millibuckets worth of destabilized redstone. That's it. So it's 200 millibuckets to fill it up. So it's two redstone per conduit that you make, and that recipe for these gets you six of them. So, you know, one recipe, you need 12 redstone for six of those guys. 
So you, all you do is you drop the redstone in here and have it export the orange tank, and then you set the magma crucible on top to blue, or you can do to the side if you want to, if they're side to side. And then you drop the conduit in here, and it will transpose the redstone into it, and that's how you cook it up. So it's not that hard, I swear to God. If you want to go a slightly easier route, there's a lower tech version called the Leadstone Energy Conduit, which is just six red, redstone, two lead, and any kind of glass. This is like any kind of cable recipe, really. That'll get you six leadstone conduits. I don't recommend using those, though, uh, any more than you can get away with. Obviously, when you first start the game and you're really low tech, you're going to have to use this option to get going because you won't have access to the uh, machines that you need or the power that you got need to get going. So you'll have to use these a little bit in the beginning. But uh, the difference is these only transfer 80 RFT, 80 redstone flux per tick, whereas the uh, redstone cell or the redstone energy cell will get you 1,000, or 10,000, excuse me. So it's 80 versus 10,000. So basically, it's going to be one conduit per engine, because if you remember that engine when we set it up right here a second ago, it could do 80 RFT at max. So it's one of those conduits per engine per machine. So you have crazy, crazy grids. It's no good whatsoever. So you have to use those initially to begin with, but you upgrade these as soon as you can. Definitely as soon as you can. So let's get some steam dynamos going here. I'm going to just set these along here. Like so. Actually, let's move it up one. How many did I get there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, that was perfect. Cool. Yep. And then we're going to right click this to make that go away so it doesn't connect and right click him. This is the crescent hammer, which is part of the thermal expansion hammers. Just uh, one tin and three iron. That's all it is. That will rotate everything for you. I'm going to leave these guys set to uh, enabled low. Once they fill up, they will eventually just stop running or do their, their idle time. Now we're going to get the fluid ducts. Thermal expansion fluid ducts is just two copper around some of that hardened glass we talked about before. Get you six of them. And if we place these on the boiler here, you can see it automatically started pushing steam out. You see the thing filled up with steam? So you don't need to do anything special with these as long as whatever you're putting them against will automatically output. So that's exactly what we want to have happen right now. So I'm going to put these in here like this. I don't want that to connect there. You can see they started lighting up because they instantly started running. And then what happens is the boiler has to heat up. The hotter the, the hotter the boiler is, it's running at 1,000, which is capped out at 1,000 degrees Celsius. The hotter the thing is, the more it'll run. And I believe, wow, that's draining steam a lot. Let's, uh, thought I could support those. Yeah, that's, that's, that's better. So, when it's not very hot, when it's just a couple degrees C, it won't start producing steam until it hits 100 degrees C. Once it hits 100 degrees C, it'll start putting out steam. But before it, it heats up, it's just really inefficient. It doesn't put out very much steam. The hotter it gets, the more steam it puts out. So at maximum here, you can see it's just kind of hovering around 1,050,000 uh, millibuckets. At maximum, it can support, what do we got here? Eight of these, 16? Two, four, six, eight. I thought I could do 18. But I guess not, because it can do 18 steam engines from its own thing. But it can do 16 of these guys. So that's pretty good. And you can see I've got a redstone cell down here that's charging up. The redstone cells, there's a couple different kind of cells. Your leadstone cell, which can only send and receive a maximum of 400 RFT. We covered that a few minutes ago. You do your leadstone energy frame, and then you surround it with copper and a redstone conductance coil, which is that electrum ingot, and two of the redstone. So it's just like the gold one, but it's electrum instead. Then you could upgrade that one if you want to into a hardened energy cell, which is just four Einvar around that same energy cell. Or you can take the cell frame and surround it like this with another conductance coil. So either way you have to finish the cell. 
The hardened guy is an upgraded version. He can send and receive. Okay, so the leadstone basic starting leadstone energy cell can send and receive up to 80 RFT maximum. So that's just one engine basically. The hardened one is 400, so it's going to be five engines. And then the redstone energy cell can send and receive up to 2,000. And he is going to be made out of a redstone energy cell frame that's full. Three of those electrum, two lead, and another redstone conductance coil, which is the electrum guy. The redstone cell frame is made just like the, con uh, the conduits we just talked about, except for it's the cell frame instead. But it's 4,000 millibuckets. It's 40 redstone right here. Okay? And then you got your four electrum ingots around the corner, four of those hardened glass, and a diamond to get the basic starting cell frame, which is empty. And he holds upwards, I uh, don't remember exactly how much energy he holds. I think it's 600,000 RF or 6 million, I think. But then the resonant energy cell holds, I think, 10 million energy. Oh, right there, it says charge 0, 50 million RF, 10 million RF. 2,000 RF uh, and 4,000, 400,000 RF. Oh, that's, well, that's 2,000, 1,000, so. <laughs> okay. The resonant cell is going to be, you can upgrade your energy, your redstone energy uh, cell from it, and then you put with enderium ingots. Enderium's kind of complicated. <laughs> All you got to do for enderium is you're going to take uh, Merp. There we go. So all you got to do is you take an induction smelter and dump an enderium blend, two enderium blend, and one pyrothium dust. The enderium blend is made by a resonant ender bucket, a shiny pulverized metal, and four tin powder. Uh, this guy's gotten sometimes you get a 10% chance of pulverizing ferrous to get one of these guys. Or if you have neither metals installed, there is neither platinum, which gives us four of those guys. So that's a cross-mod compatibility thing. That's a different mod. Uh, Resonant Ender Bucket is 1,000 millibuckets of Ender Pearl. Gets you 250. One Ender Pearl gets you 250 millibuckets. So you need four of these guys to make one bucket worth. And then you put the bucket itself into a transposer uh, in order to actually fill the bucket up. And then the um, Enderium Blend. That's the Enderium Blend. The Pyrothium Dust is just... A sulfur, a pulverized coal, a redstone, and a blaze powder. And the uh, sulfur can come from macerating most things. If you pulverize things, here's sulfur ore. That's a world gen. Uh, here's nether quartz. Gets you a 10% chance of getting some from pulverizing the nether quartz. Um, same thing from like pulverizing coal and nether rack and that kind of thing. The highest chance is pulverizing uh, a blaze rod to get four blaze powders. You get a 50% chance of getting one of those. So that's how I usually get them myself. So as you can see, our steam boiler is keeping up pretty decently. It's actually got a little bit of a positive income, so maybe we can even activate one more of these guys. Maybe it is all of them. I did a single player test, and I thought it kept up with all 18. So I think it's just once they fill up... Yeah, I think he'll keep up with all 18. Tweak that a little bit if you find that you can only keep up with 17 or 16. I mean, that's that's not a big deal at all. You can disconnect them as well, just like that, if you just want to leave the cable there. So, anyway, that should be good. And then you can see our machines back here have power now. They didn't have power before. So all is said and good. Make sure when you're configuring your energy cell that you come into the configuration. Blue side, you see the blue dots in the corners? It faces whatever side you place it down on. So let me grab one really quick here just to show you guys. I'll place this down. You can see how this got like the couple of sideways lines. Let me get rid of that child really quick here. That is just ticking me off. So uh, did that not stick? There we go. So you got your four corners here. And if you look at the sides and the top, you can see you can kind of see through it. It's a little bit transparent. You got a little, little flowing redstone in there, that flowing redstone flux that we had going on before. You can see it through most of the sides, except for the side that faced you when you placed it down. So this is kind of a solid face here. And if I remove this, you can see that this one's kind of a brighter red because it's full up on energy. See? 
that's kind of like an outwards energy meter. You can tell how full it is just at a glance, which is kind of cool. But that's the side that faces you. So when you look into the uh, machine, you can see here, this is the front facing side. The blue dots in the corners is input. It will take power in from the blue corners. And the orange dots, you can see I've got at the top here, is output. It outputs energy to the orange dots. And that's just a simple click to change those. I'm not sure what the yellow side does. Oh, the yellow side is disabled, so if you don't want it to do anything from one side, you can see that the uh, red sun cell disconnected from there. If I change it back, it reconnected. So yellow is disabled. It doesn't do anything on the yellow sides. Okay. Sweet. So that's going to give us our way to get power. So that is the steam dynamo. I think what I'm going to do at this point is check on the time of the video. I may actually break this up into several videos now that we've covered the steam dynamos. So give me one sec, guys. I'm going to check on that. All right, guys, we are pretty low on time. We've uh, This one's been running for over half an hour at this point, a little bit more than half an hour. I think we're up to like 45 minutes or so. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to break these up into parts. Part one, we've now covered the steam dynamos. As you can see, we've got the boiler going on, and we've got the steam being pumped into our engine so we don't have to fuel them with cold constantly, which is a nice automated setup. I hope everybody enjoyed that giant setup there. It's a pretty involved setup, but uh, once you get it going, you don't ever have to touch it again, which is the whole goal. Well, unless you want to touch it. If you want to touch it, eh, make sure to close your bedroom door and lock it. <laughs> so join me for part two when we cover the magmatic dynamo. We're going to get into that pretty quickly. That's going to be a quick and easy one. I may do the magmatic dynamo in conjunction with the uh, fuel dynamo, so we'll have to see what happens. It's a compression dynamo. I might. I think I'll just break it up into all spots, actually, all the different parts. So you're going to have part one through four for each dynamo. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for those. We'll get, to, we'll get to the next Dynamo next week. And don't forget, you can check out all of my OP Gaming live on my stream at twitch.tv slash robtheopgamer, as well as on my YouTube at robtheopgamer. And see when I post videos by following me on Facebook and Twitter at robtheopgamer. Hope you all had an OP time. Catch you later.